Hey everyone, Todd Ale here. I was interviewed recently by iFiddle Magazine and it's gonna be in the November issue. But they asked if I would consider making a little video, a uh, short video with some tips for their readers. And so that's what we're doing here, but I wanna try and do it in a way that it might apply to some of the other people that are maybe not fiddlers, classical, whatever genre you're doing. So obviously intonation works pretty well in this situation. So let's talk about a couple of ideas and what I do as far as teaching intonation with my students. First of all, you have to know what it is you're trying to accomplish. And that's sort of what I would call ear training. So if you use an electronic tuner, you put it on your stand, you watch the, the needle or the light or whatever you have, that's very helpful, I think, as far as understanding what it is that you're trying to accomplish. You can see it visually. The next thing may, might be, though, some level of ear training here. So if we were playing on the D string, open D, and then we go to a G, or third finger, I want you, while you're playing your D, to be able to hear the G in your head. So I tell kids, hey, that's Here Comes the Bride. Here comes the bride. So you can actually try and sing while you're playing the old note, sing the new one, la, and then match it. La. And then when you do a next note, try and sing it before you play it, and then match it. This type of training is really helpful in developing your inner ear or the concept of the next note and I think it's critical to really playing beautifully in tune. Okay so then the next thing is what does it feel like? So part of it is about patterns. If you play whole steps, you know, they feel like this, half steps feel like this. Basically everybody's fingers are slightly different in thickness and size and as you age and the size of your instrument you know things may change but that sense of touch is critical. So first of all, I like to set the hand up so that when I'm playing my one, my four is available to me. If I set it up in a way where I can't reach the four, then every time I go to four, I have to move my arm around. So that's gonna throw off your intonation. Before you play, put your four down and then have all your fingers there. I know not all fiddlers use their fourth fingers very often, but we're just going to think in the big picture. So then you have patterns. Like if I play one to three on the D string, if I'm thinking like D, E, F sharp, G, I don't have to put all those, um, the inner finger down, one to three. But I do actually like to feel that sensation of it touching, even if I don't push the two into the string. Same thing with four. If I go one to four, I know where my inner fingers are, even if I don't push them into the string. I try and set it up in a pattern that's related to the key signature that I'm playing in. All right, so let's take it a, another step. If you're thinking about what it feels like, you also have resonance, vibrations. There's a few things that we can do. If I play any note that would match an open string in pitch name, so a G or a D or whatever. It doesn't have to be in the same octave. So if I play an A string third finger, the D, if I'm in tune to my violin or my open D, when I play this three here, it's gonna ring for quite a while. So I can actually feel that subtle vibration and I wanna make sure that my students become aware that it exists. It's called sympathetic vibrations. And also try and teach them to relax enough that they can try and feel those vibrations and relax enough that they can adjust it if they don't. So it's a little harder to feel when you don't take your bow off the string, but it's still in there. Now check this out. If I go slightly out of tune with it, you hear it die. So that is not vibrating the open D string anymore. So sympathetic vibrations are something I can actually feel through my fingertip, even through my chin. I mean, it's subtle, right? I'm not saying that you're shaking or anything, but so there is also uh, thinking about your thumb in the hand frame, I call it, the relationship of the thumb to the first finger and the relationship of the arm 
So if I'm on a lower string, I may pull my arm, I will pull my arm further this way over to my right so that my pinky can easily reach the string. So when I go to the higher string, like an E string, I drop the elbow and then incrementally I adjust it as I go across. The goal is to keep this relationship the same so that I'm just creating a pathway from the base knuckle to the fingertip. And then when I string cross, that doesn't feel different from here. Okay, if I'm shifting, I might think about my contact points. So say I'm going up to a higher position, like fifth position with my fourth finger on the E string. So in first I could play an F sharp, okay? And then go up and put my thumb in the neck joint. And if I hit that same spot and drop my four, it should be the same note, only an octave higher. So it's not magic, I just memorized what it felt like where my thumb hits and also the relationship of the pinky from the bass knuckle. So I try and replicate that. So we have some sense of feel. And then how do you memorize these things? Well, I think the trick is to drill. Any Anytime you have a problem, you need to isolate it, master it, but not just master it once do it over and over. So say I'm doing a shift from first to third position on the A string. So let's play um, a D, let me turn here. First finger, so then I would have a student shift and find it again. And I'd say do that three times in a row before you go to bed every single night. And then you can have some confidence in that shift. Okay, so you have patterns, you have sense of vibration. You have the knowledge of what the next note is going to sound like before you play it. And then you drill everything until you master it. And I know that's complicated stuff, but at least it's some ideas. And use a tuner a lot. It, it will give you equal temperament. If you don't know what that is, um, you can research it later. But it's not maybe the type of tuning that we do when we tune our open strings but it is something that can give you instant feedback. So you're watching the needle on your tuner and you can learn a lot that way, okay? Breathe and do it slowly, take your time and be very, very patient with yourself, okay? All right, hope that helps, take care.